All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, it's another video. Hopefully you find this video edifying as well as exhorting to you brothers and sisters of the household of faith. Let me start by saying all praises and glory is due to the heavenly father, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahawashai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. And that's according to the ancient Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which means He is. The true name of His only begotten Son is Yahawashai, which means He is the Savior, He is the Deliverer. And those two names will, will, will be magnified all over the world. Those two names will destroy God and Jesus Christ or any other name that tries to supersede it those two names will destroy them man yahweh and yahweh shai those are the two names that's going to be magnified all over the planet earth after the destruction particularly the dest the destruction of this place called america which will which will be destroyed 100 percent by fire fire from the so-called ufos and fire from the, uh, those missiles okay the two main agents of fire that's going to bring this place to a lake of fire. Okay, and we're patiently waiting for that. Because that's the only answer to this wicked world that we live in. Because after that, on the flip side of that, we're going to have a world of righteousness. And that's pursuant to 2 Peter 3 and 13. That prophecy must be fulfilled. Where this planet Earth goes back to total righteousness. Because right now it's just complete madness. And it's getting worse every day. Okay. All right, so that being said, um, you're looking at the title of this video. If you want to know about this Israelite thing, GMS is the avant-garde. If you want to know about this Israelite thing, GMS, as in Great Millstone, is the avant-garde. Okay? And this is something I've been saying for a while, that we're the avant-garde of this, this knowledge, this truth. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai Bar Shem Rakakwadash. The Heavenly Father Yahweh through his son Yahweh Shai set it up to be that way. Beginning with Elder Pasatar on down. Okay? We're the Avant God, man. These other Israelite groups, man, they <laughs> some of them well, well they're, they're they're funny style, man. The latest one was the ISUPK and then they they're monkey shenanigans. Okay? With Captain Tazariak, a novice like Captain Tazariak. He's a novice, man. He's a novice that got fueled by a cult, a cult of personality. All right? And he, then, uh, from what I've seen from the last video, he's not spiritual. Okay? Which is not a good sign for uh, a man of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, not to be spiritual. That's not a good sign. Avant-garde is a French term. Is a French term that means advanced god or vanguard. Yeah, that's that that describes us. The the true watchman of this nation. Pursuant to Ezekiel, what is that? Ezekiel 3 and 17. Let's go get that scripture. That's us, man. Great millstone. Somebody had said in a, in a live um, lesson that we were doing at the Ponderosa. Somebody came on set, came on the comment board saying, "Why are you guys watching the IU the IUIC? Why are you watching uh, uh, the IUIC?" And our response was like, "We watch everybody." Which we watch all the groups to see to see what they're doing that's right and that's wrong. And most of them they're doing a lot of things that's wrong. That's not according to scriptures. Okay. We're supposed to watch. We were made the watchmen. And I'm about to read it for you. Ezekiel the third chapter. Look look at the subheading here. Look at the subheading. You see it? Ezekiel's commission. This is our commission, man. Ezekiel's commission is our commission. 
Somebody put the definition of the word commission in the comment section. Appreciate it. Thank you. The water. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee. We're talking to Ezekiel, but this, this applies to us. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. And we're watching everything. Okay. Yahweh Shai said to watch as well as pray. Our main thing that we're watching for right now is the mandatory implantation of that chip. And by the way, Great Millstone, we're the main camp. These are facts. We're the main camp that's pushing out that vibration of keep your eye on this microchip when they make it mandatory. That's when all hell is going to break loose. Keep your eye on this microchip when they make it mandatory because they will do that because that's according to Bible prophecy. Revelation 13 and 16. We're the main camp that pushes that. So that alone proves we're the main uh, vanguard, avant-garde of this Israelite thing of ours, man. That alone right there, that's just one example right there. Of all the Israelite groups, we're the main group. And our affiliates, of course, our true affiliates, because you got knockoff GMS members too, okay? We're talking about the true affiliates. All right, and not no cheap knockoff, okay? We're the main ones pushing to watch that chip. Watch when they make that thing mandatory because that's pursuant to Revelation 13, 16. We're the main Israelite group doing that, man. Them other Israelite groups ain't doing that, okay? You got certain Israelite groups don't even know what, what the prophecy of Revelation 13, 16 is, okay? So we're the main watchmen. Ezekiel 3 and 17, Son of man, I have made thee a, a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. There you go. And the main thing we're warning you about is that chip. That's the, like Elder Pastor says, that's the big game changer when they make that thing mandatory. Okay, and that's going to be the fulfillment of Revelation 13, 16. Because of all, both small and great, Rich and poor to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. <laughs> and when it happens, as it is written, the same book, Ezekiel, let's go back one chapter, two and five. When that happens, then you're going to know that prophets will amount you. Ezekiel two and five. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Now, you got some Israelites that listen to that, that know uh, GMS is right. GMS is correct. Dealing with the prophecy of the microchip. They are going to make this thing mandatory. I believe that the microchip is, uh, the mandatory pushing of the microchip is the fulfillment of Revelation 13, 16. You're going to have Israelites with that mentality, which is the right mentality. But you got more Israelites that forbear. They, they ain't trying to hear that. No, that's not the mark of the beast. Sleeping with white women and uh, uh, all this crazy shit that they believe is the mark of the, the, mark of the beast. <clears throat> So they're the ones that will forbear. And they're the ones most likely going to end up taking that goddamn chip. Okay? And, and receiving the judgment pursuant to Ezekiel, not Ezekiel, I'm sorry, Revelation 14 and 9, which is to be burnt by fire. Okay? For taking that chip. So, reading on, it says, And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. There you go. And it doesn't matter whatever reason they don't want to accept that the microchip is the is the mark of the beast pursuant to Revelation 13, 16. Whatever reason they don't want to accept it, it doesn't matter. They're still rebellious. And they and, and if and if they don't repent from it, they will be destroyed. Especially if they end up taking that chip. Okay? But like Elder Apostol says, that'll that'll be the big game changer right there. That's when that's that's what's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. When, when Esau, the wicked elite, which is what they want to do, they want to chip everybody, okay? And that's pursuant to the New World Order. When Esau, the wicked elite, make that microchip mandatory, where everyone is supposed to take it, that's going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Now we're going to know who the true Israelites <clears throat> and who's not. Because it's going to take faith, total faith, for you to, for you to reject it. Okay, it's going to take total faith for you to reject it and say, no, I'm not going to take that, that, that chip. 
I'm talking to you Israelites out there. Okay? And the main one of the main reasons you wouldn't take it because you know pursuant to Revelation 13, 16, that's the mark of the beast. And the reason why you know that is because uh, the avant-garde group, Great Millstone GMS, kept pushing that. Pushing it to the point of ad nauseum because that's how Israelites learn. That's why we got to be repetitious, man, over and over again. I did that video over and over again because that's how Israelites learn. Why? Because they're hard-headed. They're stiff-necked, hard-headed, rebellious people, man. That's how they learn. That's why the Heavenly Father, when you read the law, right, you go to the book of... Uh, the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, books like that, you'll notice the law is repetitious over and over and over again. And there's a reason for that. A psych, uh, uh, um, there's the psychology behind that because our people are stiff-necked, stubborn, hard-headed people. And that's how they learn over and over again by repetition. Okay? Ezekiel 2 and 5, And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are rebellious house. There you go. Yet shall yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them. Right. When they make this microchip mandatory under the penalty of death, death by guillotine or whatever forms of death the wicked elite is going to roll out there. If you don't take that chip, then you're going to know that a prophet truly was among you. Those prophets as in GMS, Great Millstone, because we told you so. We told you so, okay? All that's got to happen is the next major crisis, and that's going to set everything into motion. <clears throat> and one of those things is going to be mandatory chipping. So again, um, the title of this video is, uh, if you want to know about this Israelite thing, GMS is the oven God. And the reason why I... I Title entitled it that was off the strength of uh, of uh, the video um, that surfaced, and uh, a few brothers have done responses to it. Okay, um, the video uh, right here. Bear with me for a minute. Yeah. Uh, the brother from South Carolina, he did a response to it uh, inside a hate group. And this has to do, this has to do again with this ISUPK group and how they were, um, uh, a segment was done on them by some, a famous YouTuber named, uh, a popular YouTuber named uh, uh, Tommy G. He's got over 2 million subscribers. And when you watch that video, you see how way off the beam, way off the mark, ISUPK truly is. And they're the main ones, one of the main, well, the main ones pushing that black Hebrew Israelite nonsense. All the Hebrew Israelites got to look like so-called black people. And that goes way back to the main school, 1 West 125th Street. All right, we had to deal with that back then. That's why at the Cornelius Council, I made that statement. Not every Israelite is going to come looking like John Schaff. And I made reference to Richard Roundtree that played the character John Schaff in the movie Schaff. Okay? And it seems here it is 2024. They're still carrying that deadbeat spirit. That's a deadbeat spirit. Not every Israelite is going to look like a so-called Negro, man. Israelites are going to look like different nations where they were scattered. The Israelites were scattered among every nation. The scriptures tell us this. And that's something a lot of Israelites don't want to accept. And that's going to be a stumbling block. Remember that the, the, the Heavenly Father have set stumbling blocks in this ministry. That's going to be a stumbling block for a lot of Israelites, man. Especially when this thing really, really, really blows wide open. This Israelite thing. And all these different Israelites going to come saying, Look, I'm an Israelite. I believe, I believe in the scriptures. And have the Holy Spirit too. You will remember the incident when uh, Peter went to Cornelius. And um, the individuals that were there with Cornelius, they all received the Holy Spirit. 
And then when Peter went back to Jerusalem, he was chastised by the rest of the apostles and the Jews. And Peter made a statement. He said, who the hell am I to withstand them from getting the Holy Spirit like we got it? Let's go to Acts 11. We'll come back to the stumbling block. But let's go to Acts 11. You got a lot of Israelites out there that are not spiritual. And Captain Tazariak, man, he's nothing but a novice fueled by a cult of personality. That's what he is. Okay? You don't want to come into this thing of ours, this Israelite thing. You don't want to come with some cult of personality. Get You get gassed up by, by a cult of personality. That's not the right way to come up in this knowledge, this truth. And some of you out there, you try to make, beginning with Elder Pastor and Down, you try to make us a cult of personality. We're not a fucking cult of personality, man. We're true blue to this thing of ours, man. Okay, you're looking at men that have given up everything for this ministry. All right, we were we were hot and heavy into this Israelite thing long before YouTube. Okay. Um, let's go to Acts eleven. Acts eleven, because when um, look at the subheading, Peter reports at Jerusalem. Now I'm gonna. Um, you know what? Let me just start at the first verse. Now, this is after Peter returned from Caesarea, where he met Cornelius. And it wasn't just Cornelius. It wasn't just Cornelius. Cornelius had um, Cornelius had other individuals there with him in the room. And they were all present to hear the words of Peter and the men that came with Peter about the gospel, particularly the gospel of Yahweh Shai, because that's the, that's the gospel that Peter taught. Cornelius, the gospel of Yahweh Shai, what Peter had learned from Yahweh Shai himself. Okay? That's what he told Cornelius. That's what Cornelius wanted to hear about. Cornelius knew about Yahweh Shai. He heard about that famous man. So he wanted to know more about him. And Peter was the perfect guy to to uh to tell to uh, speak to Cornelius. Because Peter was Peter was chosen by Yahweh Shai. Peter came up underneath Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yahweh Shai made him the head of the disciples and then apostles, okay? So let's read about it. Peter reports at Jerusalem, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles, what Gentiles are talking about? In this case, it's talking about Cornelius and the individuals that were there with him that were, that were considered Gentiles. But were they Gentiles? No, they were Israelites that were foreign to the true teachings of Yahweh Shai, the true gospel of Yahweh Shai, they were totally foreign to it. That's what the word Gentile means. It means foreigner. Okay? So reading on, it says, heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of the Heavenly Father. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the, the circumcision contended with him. Let's read that in the uh, NLT. But when Peter arrived back in Jerusalem, the Jewish believers criticized him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised, that's another title for Gentiles, right, which means foreigner. Again, you had the Israelites that were scattered among the other nations. They didn't keep the custom of circumcision. That's foreign to the other nations, the custom of circumcision. That was, a, that was a custom mainly given to us Israelites, the custom of circumcision. So the other nations, that was foreign to them. So the Israelites that were scattered among the other nations, a custom like circumcision would have been foreign to them too. So now when they were brought back into the faith, brought back into the truth, which part of the truth is our laws, statutes, and commandments, they would have been brought back to circumcision. Okay which is part of our law. And, and, and circumcision is a, is a law of uh, common sense. It's a common sense law. Because when you circumcise, when a, 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 a penis is circumcised, which the word penis just means tail. It's from the Latin meaning tail, if you didn't know that. When, you, when a penis is circumcised, there's less chances of it uh, getting diseased. Check it out. The people that, um, especially like the, for instance, the Moabites, they don't believe in circumcision. And they have the highest rate of penile cancer. 
Okay? So it's a common sense law, as is all the laws of Yahweh Shem Yashai. They're all common sense laws. Like when the Lord told us not to eat pork, there's a, there's a reason for that. The, the pig was set up to be the garbage animal of the planet Earth. When I lived in St. Lucia, man, for those seven years, what was it, 1971 to 1977, those six years, I saw a pig eat a cardboard box. No lie, man. Because they used to let the pigs back back in the day, they, there was this place called where we lived in, in, in the, the village where we lived, there was this place called Mang, Mang. And it was like a, it was like a, um, how do I describe it? It was like a place where you, where the city threw the trash there. And, and there were lots of pigs around that area. Wild pigs, just, just roaming free. And they would eat, why do you think there's a saying, greedy as a pig? They would eat every, damn near eat everything in sight. Okay, that's what pigs do. All right, so that's one of the reasons why the Heavenly Father said not to eat the pig. It's a filthy animal. Okay? Anyway, let's read on. It says, it says, uh, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and, didn't, and didst eat with them. And they made reference to when Peter went to Cornelius, which Peter, which Peter was commissioned by the Holy Spirit to go there, to go to Cornelius. Remember the, the, the dream that Peter had? He was commissioned to go to the Cornelius and the, and the individuals that were with Cornelius to hear, so that they could hear the word of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. You entered the home of Gentiles and even ate with them, they said. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. Now we're going to get to the point, the part where Peter said, who the hell was I to resist them getting the Holy Spirit like we got it? And that's what that's the key of this thing of ours. That's the key, man, to get the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you ain't understanding these scriptures, man. You ain't understanding these scriptures and you ain't teaching them correctly without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. And the Holy Spirit is not something you can order on on uh, on um, what's that that company that delivers <clears throat> Amazon. The Holy Spirit ain't something you can order on on online, and it'll come to you through Amazon. The Holy Spirit is a thing that is given to us as a spiritual gift from Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai. The Holy Spirit it comes from the throne. Of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahweh Shai, as it is written in the Apocrypha, in uh, what is that, Wisdom of Solomon? I believe it is, 9 and 17. Let's go there. That's what the Holy Spirit is. And you can tell if you're a spiritual man and, and you're in, you in this, you in this uh, faith, you can tell when someone has the Holy Spirit. You can tell when the Holy Spirit is working or, or channeling, flowing through someone. You can tell, man. As it is written, the spiritual man judgeth all things. How about that? And a lot of these other Israelite groups, they're not spiritual, man. Especially that IUIC. Not IUIC. They got them on the brain. That ISUPK. Especially that group. <laughs> they almost... The, I, the ISUPK, they're almost up there with GOCC. They're neck and neck. Another totally reprobate group. Reprobate Israelite group. Like I said in the title of this video, and I'll say it again, if you want to know about this Israelite thing, GMS is the avant-garde. Facts, okay? We're the group, and, and it's kind of ironic because we're the most hated Israelite group. So check that out, man. And Yahweh Shai did say, we shall be hated of all men for his name's sake. So there you go. We got to be doing something right. <laughs> we got to be doing something right. Because that's what Yahweh Shai said. You shall be hated of all men for my namesake. The scriptures don't lie. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17. Here we go. Well, let me start at 16. And hardly do we guess aright at the things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. And and uh, there was a quote, man. I had, I had the... Um, Oh, man, I had the picture. Let me see if I can find it. 
uh, bear with me for a minute. I'm going to put this thing on pause because it's a it's an excellent quote. You might want to hear it. So check this out. Okay, I'm back. I found a quote for you. Check this out. This is from Arthur W. Pink, right? The Bible is no lazy man's book. Hold up. The Bible is no lazy man's book. Much of its treasure, like the valuable minerals stored in the bowels of the earth, only yield up themselves to the diligent seeker. I told you you'd want to hear this quote. That's a powerful quote, man. And I remember I saw it and I saved it. I've, I've had this in my phone for a while. This quote here. Let's read that one more time. The Bible is no lazy man's book. So you, you can't be lazy in this thing of ours. And, and who? Hey, let me ask you all something out there. Who's the hardest working Israelite group in this Israelite thing of ours? You got it. Great Millstone, GMS. All right, we put in mad work, okay? You couldn't possibly watch <laughs> all the members of GMSR videos. And not only just the, the top men do videos, the, 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 uh, the other camps, the, the men of the camps, they do videos. You'll notice in these other groups, only certain men do videos. The rest are just like sycophant robots that hinge upon every command that the that the head guy makes no matter if it's uh wrong no matter if it's right or wrong they they just they just follow it okay it's not like that here at uh, great millstone every every man at great millstone every man is putting in their their work they're putting in their work man that's 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 the uh, uh the way elder pastor set it up they putting in their brick. Remember, as it is written, we are lively stones built up a spiritual temple. Every man is putting in their brick, man. They doing work. And if you don't do work at GMS, if you ain't putting in work at GMS, we give, we give you the side eye, man. All right? We give you the side eye, and it's only a matter of time till you get cast out. Because every man got to put in their brick, man. You got you to gotta master these scriptures, and you got to do lessons. That's how we get down at, at Great Millstone, GMS. Okay, now these other Israelite groups, man, you, you can, why you think you have certain guys, they, nah, I'm not going to join GMS. They're going to make me work. They go to these other Israelite groups, and as long as they're kissing the ass of the leader, they can coast in those groups. They can wear their hair long, you know. Now, I'll say it again. GMS is the avant-garde, man. We're the way, we're the way a, a, an Israelite group is supposed to be. Okay, but again, going back to this quote, the Bible is no lazy man's book. Much of its treasure, right, like the valuable minerals stored in the bowels of the earth, like gold, gold for an example, only yield up themselves to the diligent seeker. And that's scriptural. Okay, that's scriptural. So again, going back to, it says, give diligence to make our call in an election sure. There is no more diligent group than GMS Great Millstone. Facts. Okay? And we, we were extremely diligent in watching. Okay? And that group, the IUIC, especially the leader, man, that, they, they watch everything we do and try to emulate us. So much so they're using the same terminology that we use. Not too long ago, Nate said, the wacky tacky Christian. Now, where the hell did he get that from? What, did that come, come to him in a dream? No. He got that from us, man. We're the ones that was that were saying that. The wacky tacky Christian. I, I believe that started with Elder Pastor. Okay? <laughs> You're going to know who, 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 who the Spirit is dealing with. The Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bar Shai. You're going to know who, who the Spirit is really dealing with, man. Pursuant to Malachi, the third chapter. Then shall he return and be able to discern between him that serveth the Lord and him that serveth him not. A lot of these other Israelite groups, they're, ser they're serving their own belly. 
They're not serving the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. They're serving their own interests, their own belly. Most of them, the, instead of being prophets, they're profiteers. Selling every goddamn thing that ain't nailed down. And, and shit that's, try, that's nailed down, they're trying to sell. We don't do that here at GMS. We don't do that at Great Millstone. Okay? We are the avant-garde of this Israelite thing of ours. Hands down. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 16 again. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon earth. And with labor do we find the things that are before us. But the things that are in heaven, who have searched out? And thy counsel, here's the point, and thy counsel, who have known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. So there you go. That's why I said, without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible for you to break down these scriptures correctly. Without the Holy Spirit, you just reduce to a false prophet, a false teacher, without the Holy Spirit. So, so try that one on for size. Anyway, get back to, uh, or getting back to Acts 11. We're talking about Peter here. And when he went to Cornelius <coughs> and the individuals that were with him, he said, look, I, I couldn't refuse them. They received the Holy Spirit like we did. Let's read. It says, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. Because remember, he was being accused of going to these foreigners. You had no business going to those foreigners, Peter. What are you doing? This truth is only for the Jews. <laughs> this, this truth is only for us. But what they didn't realize is that Cornelius and the individuals that was with him, they were Israelites. And they were part of the fold too. Remember, Yahweh I said, this was, oh, wait a minute. This was like a fulfillment, part of it at least, where Yahweh I said, other fold, other sheep I have, that are not of this fold, them also must I bring. Because the spirit of Yahweh was within Peter when he went to Cornelius. Yahweh clearly said, other sheep I have. Let's read that. Other sheep I have. And that was really fulfilled through, it started with Peter, but it was really fulfilled through Paul, Apostle Paul. His main job was to go to those Israelites that were scattered. Man, Apostle Paul was going to all kinds of strange and foreign lands in hopes of finding the elect. Because he all he, he was only concerned about the elect. He said that. I endure all things for the elect's sake. So he he went, he was by the Holy Spirit, he was taken to many strange lands in in uh, in, in hopes of through the gospel finding the Lord's elect. And he was raised up for that very purpose, Apostle Paul. That's why he made that statement, I magnify mine office. Okay? Other sheep I have. Let's get what Yahweh Shai said. There it is right there. John 10 and 16. These, are, As you clearly see, these words are written in red. Uh, John 10 and 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Who's the sheep? The Israelites. The only nation that's ever been called the sheep of the Heavenly Father are the, are the nation, or is the nation of Israel. Okay? The other nations were not considered to be sheep. The other nations by scripture are considered to be goats. That's why the, the prophecy is when Yahweh comes back, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Okay? Let's read on. It says, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. And Cornelius and the individuals that were with him is a great example of that. Okay, the fold is talking about back then were the Jews. Okay? The Jews. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also must I bring. Right? And they shall hear my voice and they shall, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, right? One nation, which ultimately the other sheep, another part of the other sheep were the other tribes as well. Okay. And we know for a fact that there were members of the other tribes in Jerusalem, even during the time of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. One example that comes to mind is Anna the prophetess, which was a, a, a wife of a prophet. She was of the tribe of Asher. So that gives us a clue that they were members of the other tribes. That is the northern kingdom back then in the land of Jerusalem, 
in the land of Israel. Okay? So that's also part of the other sheep Yahweh Shai was talking about. Because when the truth started, it mainly started with the Jews. And that's according to Bible prophecy. With Judah. Okay? So there you go. Now, could uh, certain members that were back there with Cornelius, could they have been of the Northern Kingdom, members of the Northern Kingdom? Could be, could have been. All right? It, do, it, do, it doesn't tell us, but it's worth considering, especially when you know that there were members of the Northern Kingdom scattered among the Jews. It was predominantly the Jews, as in Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, but there were scattered members. How do we know this? Again, the tribe of Asher is a perfect example. All right? This woman who was of the tribe of Asher, Anna the prophetess. Anyway, back to Acts 11 and 3, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Right? But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them. So Peter was in the spirit. The fourth verse in the NLT. Then Peter told them exactly what happened. So let's read it. I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. A certain vessel descend as it were. I'm sorry. A certain vessel descend as it had been a great sheet let down by heaven or let down from heaven by four corners and it came even unto me, even to me. Because Peter was, was the head. Peter was the the head set up to be the head by Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai told Peter, upon you I'm going to build my church. Okay? So Peter was set up to be the head. And Peter in his past life, that was King David. The same thing was said to King David. Okay? When King David was, was, was chosen to, the Lord said through the prophet, I, I took you from the sheep coat and made you head of the sheep. And of all the kings of Israel, underneath Yahweh Shai, of course, the most beloved king was David, King David. His, his very name means beloved. The name David, Dawadda in the Hebrew, means beloved. Beloved. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. I was in the town of Joppa, he said, and while I was praying, I went into a trance and saw a vision. Something like a, la a large sheet was let down by its four corners, which represented Israel. From the Israel was scattered to the four corners of the earth from the sky, and it came right down to me. Upon the which, when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air, which is what Israel ended up worship, worshiping. A great scripture for that is Romans. Romans, I think it's Romans, the first chapter. They're worshiping. Let me see if I'm correct on that. Romans, the first chapter. Four-footed beast. Let me see if, if, if that's one. Bear with me for a minute. Uh, yeah, here we go. Romans 1 and 21. Because that when they knew the Heavenly Father, they glorified Him not as the Heavenly Father, neither were thankful. Talking about the wickedness of Israelites here in the Scripture. But became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And change the glory of the uncorruptible power, which his name is Yahweh, into an image made like corruptible man. A, gr a great example of that would have been back then, especially would have been uh, Jesus Christos. When Ptolemy set up Jesus Christos to be worshipped, also known as Serapis Christus, you had many Israelites worshipping that, that uh, corruptible man, that image that Ptolemy the first gave them going way back to 280. 282 BC. Okay? And, and Serapis Chris Serapis Christus worship was a was a real thing back then. 
Ptolemy the first created that image and had a lot of Israelites, especially Israelites living in Alexandria, Egypt, bowing down to that image. And when we go to the account in Maccabees, 1 Maccabees, the, the first chapter, it tells us how many Israelites made covenants with the Greeks, <clears throat> became like the Greeks, worshiping the customs of the Greeks. Anyway, and change the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible man. Again, I gave you an example. And to birds and four-footed beasts. Now, isn't that the same thing Peter saw in his vision? The sheep let down with all kind of manner of unclean animals on it. That's what Israelites were doing. They were eating unclean animals and worshiping other unclean animals. Okay? Made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, the Heavenly Father also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Right. Being a mo, homosexuality, lesbianism. Israel got into all of that, man. Okay? Who changed the truth of the Heavenly Father into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Which means, so let it be. Okay? So this is what Peter saw in his vision. Alright? When he talked, when it talks about, upon the which when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. The same thing written in Romans, the first chapter. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat, which is what the wicked Israelites were doing. They were eating all kind of abomination. Okay? But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean have at any time entered into my mouth. Right, Peter kept the law. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. No, Lord, I replied, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the Israelite foreigners, they, they did that. That's one of the reasons why they were called Gentiles. They ate things that were against the law. Okay? But the voice answered me and said again from heaven, What the Heavenly Father have cleansed, that call not thou common. And who was he getting ready to clean? the Israelite foreigners, as is the case with Peter and the individuals that, not Peter, I'm sorry, Cornelius and the individuals that were there with him. They were getting ready to be, be cleansed by the word. How are you cleansed? You're cleansed by the word. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 9. The word that was coming from Peter, they were getting ready to be cleansed by it. In particular, Yahweh Shai's doctrine, because there were many doctrines back then but Yahweh Shai's doctrine, and let me say that again, Yahweh Shai's doctrine was the purest form of this doctrine, man, of this Israelite doctrine. That's Yahweh Shai's doctrine. That's the doctrine we teach, beginning of all the pastor on down. We teach Yahweh Shai's doctrine, the pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai, which we get through the Holy Spirit from Yahweh Shai, pursuant to Revelation 3 and 20, where Yahweh Shai said he would sup with us and we with him. Well, come on, man. Come on, man. I'll say it again, GMS, Great Millstone, we're the avant-garde of this Israelite thing, man. Hands down, facts, okay? Bear with me for a minute. Yeah. Psalms 119 and 9. Let's read that one. Because that's how you're cleansed. Through the pure doctrine of Yahweh Shai. Begins there. Psalm 119 and 9. It says, Wherewithal shall a, shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. See that? So that's how you're cleansed. So going back to Acts. 11 and 9 but the voice answered me again from heaven what the heavenly father have cleansed so now we know how we so now we know how we're cleansed right 
that call not thou common. That's why Peter was there. To give them the word so that they could be cleansed. Who's the them? Cornelius and the individuals that were there with him. Then it goes on to say, and this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. That's according to the vision, right? So now we know what that vision meant. And behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house where I was, sent from Caesarea, where Cornelius lived, and the men that were with him, the individuals that were there in the room with him, unto me. And the spirit, uh, there's the spirit, the spirit. And the spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. So the Holy Spirit, this was all done by the Holy Spirit. As it is written, whoever resisted the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai can't resist his will, man. And we do we do what Yahweh Bashim Yahushai uh, compels us to do through the spirit. Okay, let's read that in the NLT. The Holy Spirit. So here's Peter telling these guys that that that, that brought him up on charges. Telling them, hey, you went among them heathens, man. What's wrong with you, Peter? Here's Peter telling them, no, it's the Holy Spirit that had me do what I did. Peter, Peter had to explain himself, man. Put your mind back to when this was happening. Try to take your mind back to that time. Okay? And that's what the wacky-tacky Christian can't do, won't do, can't do. That's why they, they come up short every time. They don't understand... They don't understand the meaning of words. They don't, they don't, they're not able to regress their memory or their mind, as it were, back to what's really happening. Not, I shouldn't say memory, but their mind back to what was really happening and what they're reading. Okay? You can, you, you can damn near, uh, you know, when we read these scriptures, you can damn near uh, uh, taste it, man. You know? Because <laughs> guess what? We were back there. It's, we're reading about ourselves. We understand about reincarnation. Shit, why do you think we, we're, the, we, we're, we're literally the author of these scriptures? Some of us that are in this ministry actually wrote these letters. Now, how about that? <laughs> Let's move on, man. It says, the Holy Spirit told me to go with them and not to worry that they were Gentiles. All right, we understand what that means. They were foreign, they were Israelite foreigners. Is foreign to what? Foreign to the customs, foreign to the laws, the statutes and commandments. Like like uh, circumcision, case in point. All right? Read on, it says, These six brothers here accompanied me, and we soon entered the home of the man who had sent for us, which would be Cornelius, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. All right. He told us how an angel had appeared to him in his home and had told him, Send, men, send, send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And not only that, shall be cleansed by those words. Again, Psalm 119 and 9. He will tell you how you and everyone in your household can be saved. And as I began to speak, as he began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at the beginning. Who's the us? Who is Peter talking to? The rest of the apostles. The rest of the disciples who became apostles. They received the Holy Spirit from Yahweh Shai. Guess what? The, the individuals, Cornelius and the individuals that were there with him, they also received the Holy Spirit. And we teach, again, going back to Great Millstone, we teach according to the Holy Spirit. In our greeting, we tell you the Holy Spirit. We say, Yahweh Barshem, Yahweh Shai Barshem, Raka, Qua, Dash. And that's how, wait a minute, when Yahweh Shai gave the commission to teach, that's how he, he told us to teach. Let's go to Matthew 28, where Yahweh Shai gave the order, the command of how to teach. And Great Millstone, we're the only ones doing that, man, and our true affiliates. We teach in the name of Yahweh Barshem, 
Yahweh Shai, Bar Shem, Rakah, Kwadash. Those are facts. That's why, through the Spirit, I named this video Great Millstone GMS is the avant garde of this Israelite thing of ours. Absolutely, man. Because we're doing it the right way. And, and the fact that we're the most hated Israelite group uh, solidifies it, proves it. Because Yahweh Shai said, You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So we got to be doing something right. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ain't that what we're doing? Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kwadash. As in Spirit Holy, which literally, it's literally Spirit Holy, but the Holy Spirit. Then it goes on to say, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. There you go. So Yahweh Shai is with us, man. Yahweh Shai said this. He said, and lo, meaning look, I am with you always, even to unto the end of the world. We're in the end of the world right now. Literally, we're in the end of the world. America was once known before it received the term America or the name America was known as the end of the world. We're in the end of the world right now. Also, the end of Esau's age. You can bring that in there. We're, we're fastly approaching the end of Esau's age. And when you read Revelation 3 and 20, you see that to be even more true. Because Yahweh Shai said this. And this was said to Apostle John, the island of Patmos. And it applies to us, man. Revelation 3 and 20. Let's read it. It says, Behold, I stand at the door, the door of our mind. And knock, if any man hear my voice, through these scriptures, we hear the voice of Yahweh Shai, through these scriptures, and open the door, open our minds, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. You see that? That's the same thing we read over here when, the, when uh, Yahweh Shai gave his disciples, which became apostles, when he gave them a command. And what was that command? To teach in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yahweh bar Shem, Yahweh Shai bar Shem, Rekach, Going back to Revelation 3 and 20, what does it say? Yahweh Shai will be with us and we will sup with him and he with us. Okay? There you go. And when you go into the word sup, which I always do, the Greek word there is dipneo. Dipneo. So there's no doubt in my mind that Yahweh Shai is with us, man. Guiding us. King David said, he leadeth me beside the steel waters. The still waters. I always say steel waters. <laughs> he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me beside the paths. He leadeth me beside the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We're in the valley of the shadow of death right now. America. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What is the rod and staff? These words, these scriptures. And how can they comfort you if you don't understand them? They're of no comfort to you if you don't understand them. And the only way you can understand them totally is by the Holy Spirit. So Yahweh Shai is with us, baby. Okay? All the way. For his, for his father's namesake. Yahweh Shai loves his elect, man. After all, he, he sacrificed himself for his elect. So how are he not going to love them? And that's exactly who he's coming to collect when he comes back. His elect. Matthew, 30, Matthew 24 and 30. There's the Greek word, dipneo. And there's a particular part I love to read. And it is right here. I will make him to share in my most intimate and blissful intercourse or secrets. That's powerful, man. So you cannot tell me that Yahweh Shai ain't with us, man. Feeding us. The good shepherd. That's Yahweh Shai. He's the good shepherd. With the good pasture. <laughs> GMS is the avant-garde of this Israelite thing of ours. Hands down. I'll say it again. So back to Acts, about to wrap this up. Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? And as I began to speak, this is Peter speaking, 
the Holy Spirit fell on them as on us at, be, at the beginning. And the only nation that gets the Holy Spirit is the nation of Israel, the Israelites, beginning with the elect. Let's read that in NLT. As I began to speak, Peter continued, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as he fell on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how he said, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Right. We're baptized with the Holy Spirit, man. Again, you can't, the Holy Spirit, we read it in the Apocrypha. In thy counsel, who have known except thou send thy Holy Spirit from above? <laughs> so there you go, man. And that's only that's only a gift given. Apostle Paul calls it the spiritual gift. Let's go to that. First Corinthians twelve. That Holy Spirit is a spiritual gift, man. Look at look at the subhead in there. The use of spiritual gifts. There you go. On the on the NLT side, spiritual gifts. So that Holy Spirit is a spiritual gift, man. It's only given to the elect of the nation of Israel. No other nation, man. First Corinthians twelve and ten to another. He's talking about spiritual gifts. Okay. Let's read it. You know what? Now, okay. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts. That's the, that's the subject matter. Right? Spiritual gifts. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So, uh, Apostle Paul is talking about spiritual gifts. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. So now let's jump down. So we're talking about spiritual gifts. Let's let's get an idea of what these spiritual gifts is talking about. All right. Uh seventh verse. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. For to one is given by the spirit of the spirit to I'm a little excited. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom to another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. These are the spiritual gifts only given by the Holy Spirit to one person. The spirit gives the ability to give wise advice to another. The same spirit gives us a, a message of special knowledge. <sighs> wow. Look at that. Look at that. And we're that group, man. GMS, Great Millstone. We're that group, man. Hey, what was that? Saturday, last Saturday, Apostle Tar said, look, the, 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 uh, the mountain that Moses went to was actually a ship, a chariot. And it makes sense that Moses went into and received those laws, statutes, and commandments. It wasn't an actual mountain because to this day they can't find that mountain because it wasn't an actual mountain. Okay, it was a chariot, it was a ship. Apostle Todd, the Spirit revealed that to him, and, and I added to it by saying, yeah, well, Esdras, he said the mountain that uh, that Yahweh Shai was, was in was a ship. Esdras said that, because Esdras was looking for the mountain that Yahweh Shai was in, he couldn't find it, because it wasn't a mountain, it was a ship, it was a chariot. Okay? So that's heavy, man, the Spirit gives... Let's read that again. That's worth reading again. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. And, and man, uh, let me, uh, going back to Apostle Dahl, man, uh, um, you know, and this, this is just facts. Uh, when, the, when after the Twin Towers went down, Apostle Dahl said, nah, we ain't going around there for a while. We ain't going around there. And, and, you know, go around there and breathe that, that crummy air down there? Hell, hell no. Then years later, it, reveal, it reveals, oh, it reveals, it, it has been revealed years later that a lot of people are suing, um, uh, you know, uh, the city of New York for, for receiving cancer and, and, and horrific diseases from, from living around that area and breathing in that air. So that was wise advice that Elder Pastor gave, and he gave it through the Spirit. I'll never forget it. He said, no, nah, man, we ain't going down around that area. We used to teach down there. <laughs> so now and once again that's a demonstration of the holy spirit to to one person the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice to another the same spirit gives a message 
of special uh, special knowledge to another faith. Again, that's one of the spiritual gifts, the ability to have faith by the same spirit to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. We've got brothers who can heal. You see, and, and if it's and, and if it's the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahshai for you to be healed, you will be healed. There's no doubt about it. Who healeth as it is written in, in the Psalms, who healeth all thy diseases. Yahweh Shai does that, man. Yahweh Bashem Yahshai does that through the Spirit, man. The same Spirit gives great faith to another and to, to someone else. The one Spirit gives the gift of healing. And if a brother has great faith, it's not for him to boast. You didn't give yourself that gift. Stop boasting, man. It's not for us to boast. We didn't give ourselves these gifts. So, if, so it's, it's pretty stupid to boast. Okay? We didn't give ourselves these gifts. These gifts were given to us. Also, these gifts were given to us in a good faith effort. It's not for us to take these gifts and turn it into, in, into a profiteering scheme, man. As, as many Israelites do. That's why the gift is going to be revoked from them. And at the same time, a brutal judgment is going to, is going to, is going to be brought upon them, man. For taking this thing of ours and turning it into a marketing bazaar. Reading on, it says, To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. These are all gifts. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. That's different kinds of languages. To another, the interpretation of tongues. So you see all these gifts, man? Let's read that in NLT. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another to the ability to prophesy. That's us. It's well known. Even, even the dossier that they got on us, beginning of El the Pastor, they said that GMS is a, is a camp of prophecy. We're all about prophecy. That's a gift. Them other Israelite groups, they're not about they're not about prophecy like that. The main prophecy we got we got our eyes on is that chip, man. That that microchip. And we know exactly what it is, pursuant to Revelation 13, 16. And when it happens, like like I said earlier in the lesson, pursuant to Ezekiel 2 and 5, you're gonna know that prophets will amount you when they make this thing mandatory. And all these Israelites that were talking shit about the the the, the microchip, they're gonna have they're gonna have their hand in their mouth. They're going to be what the British call gobsmacked. Look that term up. Somebody put that in the comment section. Gobsmacked. They're going to have their hand in their mouth or on their mouth. Really, they should have a fist in their mouth. <laughs> Talking all that shit. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. There you go. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of the Heavenly Father or from another spirit. Wow. Wow. I'm blown away by this. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. Unknown lang as in, as in uh, uh, you know, tongues that, that um, the uh, Jews didn't know back then, like Latin. Latin would be an example of an unknown language back then. All right. Greek. Okay, you had those tongues. The, main, the three main tongues back then was Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. How do we know this? John, the 19th chapter, goes into it. While another is given the ability to interpret what is being said exactly. Okay, it is, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should receive. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's bad. That's bad. Okay. So these Israelite foreigners over here in Acts 11, they received the gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit through Peter. Now here it is right here, and I'm going to wrap this video up. For as much then as the Heavenly Father gave them the like gift, and, and we went into 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and we read about gifts. Apostle Paul nailed it about the different gifts. Why you think, and then you got certain Israelites got a problem with Apostle Paul's writings. You weren't given the gift. It's simple as that. You were not given the gift. <laughs> and it's only a matter of time till Yahweh Shai put the boot to your ass. 
and kick you the hell out of here. You were brought in to be made an example, then he kicked you the hell out. You weren't given the gift, man, if you got a if you got a problem with the writings of Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul nailed it with the different spiritual gifts we have been given in this ministry. That's how important his writings are. Acts 11 and 17. For as much then as the Heavenly Father gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shai, see that? What was I that I could withstand the Heavenly Father? And that's what I said from the very beginning. So you, look, you can't withstand the Heavenly Father. He's he going to give the Holy Spirit to who he wants to give it to. And you're going to know that that person has the Holy Spirit by, by the words that come out their mouth. As it is written, that's how a man is judged. A, a man, the trial of a man is his speech. That's how you know if a man has the Holy Spirit or not, by the things that he say. And when you watch these other Israelite groups, you have to wonder if they even have the Holy Spirit, if they even know what the Holy Spirit is. <laughs> you believe that every Israelite is going to look like a, a so-called Negro. Man, the Holy Spirit ain't working with you, man. The Holy Spirit is not working with you, if you believe that shit. So that was a man that was a brilliant reply that apostle peter gave to those israelites that put him on charge when he went back to jerusalem that was a brilliant reply man almost want to clap my hands at that reply when you go into the words of it when you read the scripture and go into the words of it that was a brilliant reply he gave peter gave and he gave it through the spirit that's why when we read the next verse when they heard these things they held their peace yeah what the hell are they going to say what the hell are they going to say and glorified the heavenly father saying, then have the most high Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. The Gentiles as in Israelite foreigners, because those individuals, they were Israelites. The only nation that can get the Holy Spirit is the nation of Israel. The other nations wouldn't know what to do with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> How about that? Okay. We know exactly what to do with it. Because we the Israelites, baby. Acts 11 and 18. When the others heard this, they stopped objecting. There you go. Their mouths were shut and began praising the Heavenly Father. Yeah, because that was fulfillment of prophecy. Yahweh I said, other sheep I have that are not of this fold, them also must I bring. <laughs> the fold he was talking about was the Jews. They had the other, the, the, the other fold he was talking about, Yahweh Shai, and that's, it, that's a mystery in itself. That Those were the other tribes. Eventually, Yahweh Shai came over here. Because this we're going to be one nation, man. It ain't just going to be the Jews, man. That's why the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, rather, said, have the Lord cast away his people. God forbid. Meaning, no. The other tribes ain't cast away. Like the Jews would say. The, the Jews would say, oh, the other tribes, forget about them. They're all evens. No, no. The Heavenly Father have already said by the prophets he could never forget his people. He said his people are engraved on the back of his hands. That means all the tribes. All 12 tribes. Not just the Jews. The tribe of Ephraim, he said Ephraim, he knows Ephraim. Okay? The prophecy says Ephraim got to be joined with Judah to become one nation. So that split that happened after the death of King Solomon, that's, that split is beginning to be mended. Judah and Ephraim are coming back together again, as is prophesied. Okay? Judah represents the Southern Kingdom, the leader of the Southern Kingdom. Ephraim, Ephraim represents the leader of the Northern Kingdom. Two are coming back together to be one nation. Okay? All right, so pretty much that's all I got to say. Hopefully you found this video edifying. If you did, drop a line in the comment section. And as usual, I'll see you in the next one.